Hey, in today's video, I want us to talk about why poor mentality is not why you're broke. Rich people, especially those that want to teach you how to be rich, they base their entire premise on the idea that rich people just behave and think differently. And if you just figure out how to do it yourself, you can be rich too. I want to know if it's actually possible. So in this video, I want us to talk about a few things. First, that this premise of poor versus rich mentality is completely false, how chasing wealth is what's actually keeping us poor, and lastly, how the system will never actually allow all of us to be rich. So first, let's take a look at this poor versus rich mentality. It seems inevitable that when you begin to educate yourself financially, all these gurus' first piece of advice is that you just gotta start thinking like a rich person. Listen to me, rich people think different. The only difference between successful people and not is just how they think. I found out that the secret to success is not hard work or luck. I found a new way of thinking that works for me. Being broke is a choice. They essentially tell you that rich people have been doing things differently with their money this whole time and you just didn't know about them. For example, rich people save their money, they invest their money, and as poor as well, we just spend it all. Supposedly, rich people are less likely to flaunt their wealth versus poor people who want to pretend by flaunting what they got that they're better off than they are. And while at first those sound like some reasonable thoughts. After hearing that over and over again, I can't help but think that those are actually not mentalities. They're just ways of behaving with whatever amount of money you've been given in life. If your job allows you to pay all your bills and at the end of the month you have nothing left, how are you going to save your money? What money are you going to use to invest? And furthermore, if your own family never had enough money to invest, why would they ever teach you about it? How would you even know that existed? And if you grew up never having nice things, then why wouldn't you want to get nice things for yourself the moment that you're able to get them? It kind of just sounds to me like this is how people behave based on their own realities. And it's not so much a matter of you just gotta learn to think differently. Your own reality is gonna dictate how you behave towards money if you have it or you don't. And the more and more I think about this rich versus poor mentality, the more it sounds to me like an insult, like, Maylene, you live in the smallest studio apartment in Los Angeles because you just never thought about living in a mansion, even though you live surrounded by them. When in actuality, you're poor because those are the conditions you were born into. You're rich because those are likely the conditions you were born into. And your behaviors are gonna be a direct reflection of the conditions you were brought up in. During 2020, we saw how many people who were previously doing their best to live a life that was financially responsible or maybe they were aspiring to a better life. So many of their situations just were completely out of their control and they lost their jobs, maybe they lost their savings. I would argue that last year we proved that your mentality has very little to do with your financial well-being in a capitalist society. Earlier this year, I watched this video by Sorrel called You're Trained to Be Poor, which is what pissed me off and really inspired me to do this video. I'm just really late making it. <laughs> what most people don't realize is that when it comes to finances, you are playing a rigged system. You are literally being programmed to stay poor. And it pissed me off not because she's the first person to say these ideas, but because she's someone that I previously watched. She originally started her YouTube channel as a photography channel and she would give you tips about how to look good on camera basically which by the way, really helped me make better thumbnails for YouTube. But anyway, she apparently got really tired of that and now wants to teach you how to be a rich bitch. But anyway, in her video, she explains that you're trained to be poor in school and that's why you're poor right now. That's why you're broke. Number one, we are programmed at school to be workers. Unfortunately, a lot of the ways that we are programmed to be poor, or at least programmed to stay in a certain economic class, comes down to the modern education system. And while it's true that School mainly teaches you to sit down for eight hours, do as you're told, not ask questions, behave properly. I would argue that school is actually one of the training grounds for inspiring you to chase wealth. Very early in our education, we are conditioned to start thinking about what we want to be when we grow up, which you're not allowed to say things like you just want to be happy. You have to say things like I want to be a doctor or a lawyer or a business executive. And then of course, school is literally the training 
for you to be able to hold a nine to five job. And people have even pointed out online that things like homework are training you to accept things like overtime or working past your normal nine to five hours, often without pay. But most importantly, if you're someone that wants to make a lot of money, you should choose a very demanding, highly respected career, such as the ones I mentioned, doctor, lawyer, business executive. In which case you will need to, of course, enroll in even harder classes where you'll essentially be trained to work 24 seven. And while that makes sense, like if you're a doctor, of course, that you should have more training, it doesn't really make sense that like doctors have really long shifts at work. Shouldn't a doctor be well rested? But anyway, I don't know enough about medicine, so let's not talk about that. But the point I'm trying to make is that society is constantly telling us to aspire to wealth and training us to get used to things like workaholism, being productive 24 seven. If you develop your talents and find your passion and your work all the time, you might have access to the riches of the world. And if school is not enough, on your own time, you will have the pleasure of looking at propaganda that is celebrity culture. The constant exposure to celebrity culture and lifestyle has in a way become a religion. In Chris Hedges' book, Empire of Illusion, The End of Literacy and the Triumph of Spectacle, he explains what our society might look like to societies in the future. Hedges writes, we all have gods, Martin Luther said. It is just a question of which ones. And in American society, our gods are celebrities. Religious belief and practice are commonly transferred to the adoration of celebrity. Our culture builds temples to celebrities the way Romans did for divine emperors, ancestors, and household gods. We are a de facto polytheistic society. We engaged in the same kind of primitive beliefs as older polytheistic cultures. In celebrity culture, the object is to get as close as possible to a celebrity. Relics of celebrity as coveted as magical talismans. Those who can touch the celebrity or own a relic of the celebrity hope for a transference of celebrity power. They hope for magic. And I mean, that's kind of crazy to think about. Can you imagine people from the future looking back at our society thinking that Kim Kardashian is some kind of a god? Or like trying to wrap their heads around about why people look up to her, follow her, want to know about her. <laughs> Ugh. And of course, like not everybody wants to be a celebrity or even follow celebrities, but there's like a spectrum of celebrity and being famous. For example, some people would say someone like Einstein deserves to be a celebrity. But my point is we are all trained to want to put somebody on some kind of type of pedestal in whatever community you are part of. So it is only natural that some of us would want to attain that type of status in your community, even if you don't achieve fame, for example, but you would want to be respected by your peers. And in our society, that status is often accompanied by the promise of wealth. And going back to Sorrel's video, there's actually zero advantages for a system to want to train you to be poor. In fact, I think the advantages are if the system keeps most people wanting to be rich and powerful. Because of course that benefits capitalism. Everything that's beneficial towards capitalism requires that you be productive, that you be interested in your own ability to obtain wealth, whether that's via threat of starvation and homelessness, or just the desire for you to rise up and be rich. But we, of course, won't all be wealthy because if we were all wealthy, well, then nobody will be wealthy. In order for you to have wealthy people in your society, you have to have poor people at the bottom. Now let's suspend our disbelief for a second and let's say we actually want to try some of these get rich strategies. I'm pretty sure you already know that very quickly you will find out that most of it is impossible to follow it if you aren't actually already rich to begin with. Or at least just comfortable and just have disposable cash. Because I feel like most of the advice on how to be rich boils down to save your money, then use that money to invest, whether that's the stock market or buy properties that you can run and make money, charge people rent start a business which also requires you to have money i mean even something like youtube requires you to have a little bit of money to buy equipment get an education also requires you to have a little bit of money most of the time in the us at least i guess you can marry rich 
and that involves the other person having money and not you and also just because you want to be rich and you want to change your mentality let's say you do have a little bit of money that you can save and be able to invest in something it doesn't mean that you actually know how to do it correctly or that even someone that knows what they're doing would advise you to do it based on your situation because when it comes down to it all investing is gambling at the end of the day i say that all investing is gambling because nothing is guaranteed and i feel like i need one of those um winnie the pooh memes when they he has the monocle and it's like you know the lowest level of investing is like gambling you go to the casino the next level of investing is maybe you buy stocks on your own and the next level of the meme is you invest your money with something like a hedge fund or some kind of institutional organization and probably at the top you would have buy property with a monocle and become a landlord or i don't know flip those two it, it depends on how you look at it in a research conducted by brad barber at uc davis and i will link that in the description of this video and i believe this study was mostly based on Robinhood users so people that are using that trading app Robinhood. he estimated that by a seven year mark 99 percent of users have lost all their money so that means that maybe at times they were able to make money but then they lost money or they went back and forth etc etc or maybe they never even made any money at all but 99 percent of people that purchase stocks lost their money those are not good odds while i feel like most people understand that going to a casino is gambling and it's it's kind of dumb i feel like all investing is gambling and you really have no control over whether you're gonna get your money back or not and i don't know about you i see this ad all the time it really pisses me off it says if you have five dollars you can invest your money what are you gonna invest your money on i believe they mean investing on cryptocurrency but like nobody can guarantee that that cryptocurrency is gonna go up forever okay for example last year i tried making an nft so i actually ended up putting some money in my earth on an ethereum wallet and i ended up with 50 dollars in my wallet that 50 dollars after a year is 68 dollars and ethereum has been doing like well apparently and so if in one year okay i made 18 bucks great but that's not life-changing money let's say it keeps going up at the same rate i would need like 10 years to have any significant money made and no one can guarantee that the same cryptocurrency is gonna go up forever matter of fact it goes up and down all the time you might sell at a moment that is gone down it might go down forever and by this five dollar example okay if you put five dollars on ethereum like i did five uh, last year by pure chance because i wasn't thinking about it like i'm gonna invest on ethereum and change my life okay you would now have six dollars and eight cents and i don't even know if that can get you a meal at mcdonald's at this point so i'm just like scratching my head when i see that ad because it's literally just a scam you just won five dollars from thousands millions of different people and that five dollars might not be a lot to one person but it's a lot when you're that app that gets to receive five dollars from hundreds millions thousands of people all at once and you're gonna tell me million i'm not dumb if i had any money i would go to an investing organization some kind of hedge fund some kind of institution that can invest my money smartly for me and we'll Good luck with that because you're gonna need to have money for that. Most private equity, hedge funds, etc., etc., have a minimal amount of money that you can invest. And let's just say that's $25,000. I don't know. It probably changes from organization to organization. It's not enough that you need to have those $25,000 for you to invest. They're gonna check your annual income or your assets to make sure that you're wealthy enough to become part of their exclusive circle and of course make sure you don't sue them if they lose all your money and you know all your livelihood basically another very interesting document that i found was this speech by commissioner louis a aguilar he is works for the u.s securities and exchange commission and it was actually a speech that he gave called institutional investors power and responsibility he references this study by Laura 
Casares, Field, and Michelle Lori, Institutional versus Individual Investment in IPOs, The Importance of Firm Fundamentals, which is in the Journal of Financial Quantitative Analysis. Ugh. I don't even know how I ended up talking about all this bullshit in my channel. I don't understand what's going on in my channel right now. Thank you for staying here while this happens. According to the study, institutional investors were not appreciably better than individual investors at picking big winners, but they were much better at avoiding the worst performing investments. The interesting thing is how they did it. The authors found little evidence that institutions were able to exploit private information to improve investment returns. Nor did the evidence of that particular study suggest that institutions were able to improve the performance of companies they invest in through active monitoring. Instead, it seems that these institutional investors succeeded by making better use of the publicly available information focusing on fundamentals like operating history, prior earnings, size, and liquidity. Meaning if you have more access to resources, you will do better. If you have the money to employ 100 different people that are gonna scour publicly available information, financial documents, so you can make the best investment possible, you're gonna do a lot better. Or of course, if you simply have more access to time and money, resources, education, you might do better. And guess what gets you all of those things? You already know it's money. So if you have money, you're gonna do better at investing. Now we both know that neither one of us can afford a house either, so I don't have to explain you that one either, but buying property can actually be a risky investment too if you don't understand what the level of expenses are year after year. What if you're in a time in history where people are just not renting in your area or you know, you made it an Airbnb and suddenly a worldwide virus comes in where people are not traveling. I mean, no single investment is 100% safe. And I was just watching the other day on PBS, The Pension Gamble, which is a whole entire documentary about how people's 401ks are also pretty much just gambling. I mean, you're gambling on whether your money is gonna be there when you're at retirement age. Even though most people think that there are ways to invest your 401k um, in ways that are like foolproof, you don't know if, how much of your money is going to be there after the every 10 years or so that it takes for the financial institutions of our country to break our economy. And lastly is education, which sounds like the most viable vehicle for advancement in society, of course, until our generation found out that student loan debt is crippling and actually holds you back from doing many things you like to do in life like traveling, owning a house, having a family not to mention there are other things waiting for you at the other end of your education like low wages, nepotism, having to pay your student debt every month the fact that maybe networking was actually even better than getting an education after all in terms of getting you opportunities or access to opportunity but let's imagine somehow some way we're able to put a little bit of money together and we can start our own business then we'd be set right if you watch my series mars and chill in which we read the economic and philosophical manuscripts of 1844 you might remember and if you haven't go check it out the second manuscript was called profit of capital and it explains how the whole entire premise of the free market based on competition just ends up with people that have the most money amassing most of the wealth let me give you a quick reminder if you didn't watch that something happens that causes your business to slow down or maybe it just you know it's hard to start a business maybe it is really slow who are the people that can maintain their business the longest people that have money or access to money access to credit loans etc like it doesn't matter how talented a person is your chances of maintaining your business afloat increases if you have money and so what happens in a year like covid people that don't have as much money they have to shut down their business people that have more access to money well they can maintain their business for longer maybe they can run their business at a loss or maybe they have savings, right? And they can pay their own bills. Point being that in the long run, competition itself 
results in wealthy people just amassing all the wealth so anyway i'm not making this video to make you completely depressed because i'm sure you already have enough reasons why you should be depressed in this you know year 2021 but to actually stop you feeling bad about yourself and if you are somebody that you feel broke or you feel like you want to be doing better in life it is not your fault it's not your poor mentality that's keeping you broke it's you're meant to be broke in a capitalist system a lot of people will be broke some people will have just you know enough and very 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 few people will have a lot if you think about it the fact that you're broke is the only reason why you even accept being a worker in the first place i think people are right actually to say if you just give people things for free never mind they're they would come from our own taxes but if you just give people things for free why would they work and like that's the entire premise of capitalism if we're being honest like who wants to work most of us do it under the threat of starvation and homelessness access to wealth just seems to be like a, the carrot on the stick that keeps us just trying to be part of this whole entire system like just the possibility that you might have a little bit more a few more crumbs in my opinion the actually rich mentality is siphoning the wealth of the working class that's the true rich mentality let people starve let people be slaves so that you can have however many yachts you like to have the sad part being that most of us have very moderate goals we want to have family we want to have a home even something like traveling the world i don't think is an outrageous idea because we live in on this earth and it's only normal that we were curious about it that we would want to travel and it can be done without spending a crazy level of money but for those of us that of course want to be safe in life we want to have shelter have food like we need to stop buying into the solution that individual wealth is attainable or like even benefiting us on any level our generation needs to be fighting for raising the standard of living for as many people as possible and somehow figuring out how we can invert that pyramid how can we make is this a, <laughs> is this a triangle <laughs> maybe this is a better triangle how to get more people to have a higher standard of living across the world and i should say thankfully that's already beginning to start happening with this whole entire anti-work movement people wanting to join unions people striking people refusing to work for starvation wages that's literally the only thing that has been making me feel hopeful in the past few months to be honest other than my cat i also think like if people don't want to work at all like just let them i think they should just be able to still eat and go to the hospital anyway i just feel like at a time where so many of us are being bombarded by this idea that we can just attain individual wealth we just need to literally just face the facts that that is not 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 only is it not attainable it just is not benefiting us as a society to keep pushing this narrative and keep going to financial gurus who by the way financial gurus most of them make their money by being a financial guru or like an influencer in general anyway i think i said all i had to say let me know what you think in the comments of this video subscribe if you like to continue talking about world domination and i'll see you in the next one